This is my LEGO Unimog U400 kit. Uh, was built out of the box. Um, this is no standard kit, however. I've made some changes to this, or some modifications that I'll just run through briefly on this video. This is the vehicle without the crane installed. I'm just going to run through a few of the features that I've uh, that I've added to this vehicle now. First thing you'll see is under the cab, I've added a motor unit with a two-speed gearbox, high and low ratio. So this enables uh, basically the vehicle to be driven at two different speeds with. Uh, a differing amount of torque um, and speed as, as needed. Right, so that's the motor there, and uh, that's the gear lever, so that's low range, and that's high range. And low range, high range, and there's also a neutral in there too, there it is. So you can actually move the vehicle without having it connected to the motor. I've had to remove the Lego piston, fake piston engine I should say to achieve this, but I'm uh, quite happy with the way it's worked out, the motor just fits in there, and there's actually a surprising amount of torque from it in low range especially, even for that motor. What, one thing I've had to do before motorizing it, and you'll see this here, is with the raised hubs, I've actually changed out the gear set, so instead of being one to one ratio, you'll see there that uh, there's a three to one gear ratio. So this makes it more like the real thing as well. Um, otherwise underneath um, it's mostly untouched except I've also added in um, an air suspension unit. So that's just for the rear. You can see here. I've replaced the rear springs with two pneumatic brand. And I'll just start it up shortly and you'll see that in action. The pneumatics for the rear suspension are controlled from a valve up here, and the high-low ratios are also controlled here as well. So this is your high-low ratio, and this is your air suspension. So I'll just flip this over like this, and you can see you've got up and down for the rear suspension, all controllable from the cab. You lift up the cab, you'll see there's pneumatic lines running down from the control down to the pneumatic system. I'm just going to pop off the rear tray now. Like so, there's the air tank that I've also added in. This allows the air system to retain some amount of pressure. Uh, stick that away from there. So the motor's not having to run the compressor all the time. So I've got the battery box hooked up at the moment to the compressor. I'm just going to run this shortly and uh, show you how it works. So just put that down to the air compressor. Everything else is in neutral. These are the PTOs. Um, all right. So let's do that. Batteries are a bit low, but you'll notice that as the air tank fills up, the motor will, will start to strain a bit more. This is probably more than enough air pressure as it is to run the rear suspension. So I'm just going to, there you go, I can hear it slow down already. So I'll switch that off, go up here for the cab, and let's do this over like this. going to push forward on that lever to raise the rear suspension. So I'm going to push forward and I'm going to leave the camera there and you'll see it hopefully raise upwards. So I'm pushing forward now. I'm just letting it go to full extension. You can actually return the lever back to center 
to get the desired ride height that you're after. So that's fully extended. As you can see, there's not much air pressure needed to achieve that. Uh, so now the rear is quite a bit higher. I can actually implement this on all four wheels as well, uh, but I probably won't get that far. Sadly, I'm probably going to dismantle this kit very soon and uh, use the parts for my own creations. As much as I've enjoyed customizing this kit, um, it's probably going to get dismantled soon. So here you've got the uh, air tank that I spoke about before and I've just had to redo some of the pneumatic lines. Those pneumatic lines you see come from the cab for the air suspension and they run to the rear pneumatic rams um, and they also take their pressure from the air tank. Alright, so that's basically it. Um, I haven't remote controlled this unit. I was thinking about doing that. There's uh, enough room to do it. You just need um, the IR kit. Um, and I also haven't touched the steering system, so that would need to be motorized as well for a true remote control. So I'm just going to go ahead and release the pressure from the springs. And that should cause them to actually drop down. The rear end is quite light at the moment, so it's probably not going to come down. But if I apply some pressure like this, it will drop. And I've got enough time to center the control. And with control centered, I get a little bit of springing action as well from the rear. Um, Alright, the last thing I've done, I'll just quickly show you. So I've added in a cover here. Um, and I've actually put in an emergency air pump system that you can see there. Basically a shaft that can alternatively run the air compressor. So as it says here, the first thing we need to do is isolate the motor. So let's just do that now. So let's isolate the motor from the equation. So now the pump can turn freely just with the movement of the hand. So what inside here you've actually got a pump motor. Right. You'll see there just quickly that I've uh, also put in a gear clutch for the compressor motor. So when the air tank fills up, the uh, clutch will kick in and it won't strain the motor. So let's go ahead and add that in now. just the beam that acts as a handle and can start pumping away and it's basically just charging the air tank with air pressure so all it takes is just a few pumps and this can either run the rear crane it basically pressurizes the air tank so that air tank can service the rear crane from this fitting here uh, or also the front plow extension which is run from that little port there the air fitting there alright let's go see if the suspension has enough pressure to get moving so I've just done a few hand pumps uh, probably not quite rising just yet but basically you can pump up the rear suspension or any air driven services with this auxiliary pump so that's what I'm doing now and you can probably see if you watch the uh, extension on that ram it's gradually moving upwards so basically you don't need power to run the air system um, so that's basically it, there you go, it's raised up again my version of LEGO's Unimog customized. Before I go, I'll just hook up the battery system to the motor and give it a quick whirl on the dinner table. So here we are, I've moved the battery box. I've actually got more than one, but for the sake of the video I've just removed it, put it up there. And the drive motor is connected by connection to this battery box. Um, now what have I got it in? I've got it in low range at the moment. I'm just going to give it a quick flick 
Let me see how fast it goes. Battery is quite low, as I mentioned before. But one way. You can see it's got quite a lot of torque there to climb. Stop it going off the table. In there, yeah, that stopped it. There's quite a bit of torque there. Of course, the batteries are low, so that's what you'll get. Now, I'll just try it in second speed. Stop it, engage second gear. Like so. Gonna, as you can see it goes quite a bit faster in second gear. Oops, just like that. So that's basically it. Um, I haven't implemented any gate system on the gearbox, so it does slip out of gear every now and then. Uh, but high gear pushes it along at a pretty good speed um, so that's just showing you what you can do with it um, all this needs now is remote control and you have yourself a nice little trial truck uh, and a licensed product as well from Lego uh, and Mercedes-Benz alright cheers